Hello friends, my name is Real Emil, and welcome to the Season 3 premiere of my Forza Top Gear lap series. We are here on Forza Motorsport 6 and we'll be setting around some benchmarks for the cars to compare to when more and more cars go round. First thing I wanted to say is any painters in the Forza community who are interested in painting me a car for this sort of starting sequence, I would very much appreciate uh, a painter to paint me a car. I painted the last ones I used in Forza 5 uh, but I haven't really had time to paint a different sort of car so I'm just using this BAC Mono as it's one of the cars that's going to be going around today as well. Anyway I figured I would start off by just showing you the changes to the Top Gear track. There are multiple changes to the track from Forza Motorsport 5 and I figured I would use this first lap to illustrate them. This is a Ford Mustang 2015, 421 horsepower, 3618 pounds of weight. Now I reviewed this car back in Forza Motorsport 5 and most of what I said still stands true in Forza 6 although the cars in general do handle a little bit better than they used to. Uh, they're a bit less heavy feeling and they don't slide around quite as much. It's kind of an in-between between Forza 4 and Forza 6. Anyway, this second corner for starters seems to loop around a bit more. Like it started a bit more further down the track uh, than it did in this game, or at least that's what it feels like. So I'm just driving the same line I did in Forza 5. Secondly, uh, to annoy me a little bit, there is a tire wall right there. Uh, so you can't really see what happens at the hammerhead, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but believe me, that's the least of my worries when it comes to this track, as you're about to see. Now, I used to be able to cut the grass slightly going into hammerhead, however, as you just saw there, there is a big tire wall there now, uh, which I seem to hit quite a lot. There's also a tire wall there, so I can't cut the grass quite as well as I used to be able to. Obviously, if I cut the grass that much to where the wall was, that would be cheating slightly, but at the same time, it's still quite far in. And finally, the most annoying thing, there's a tire wall right there, so I can't really cut the grass like you're kind of supposed to around this track. So, that does make driving these cars a little bit harder. Anyway, first car up today, or second car even, is the BAC Mono. 280 horsepower, 1,354 pounds of weight engine from the Ford Galaxy People Carrier in this BAC Mono. Now, the Mono's a car I'm not particularly keen on, or wasn't, um, it, I'm not a huge fan of track cars to begin with, and this one doesn't really interest me, I don't particularly like the look of it, because, well, it's just a space frame, and I'd much rather have an aerial atom. However, I do have to say, I've driven this quite a bit in the career mode, and of course doing the laps, and this is a fantastic handling car. The track cars are actually a bit improved from Forza 5, they were a bit too slidey in 5, and believe me, you can still get these ones sideways, no problem. However, they don't quite do it as willingly anymore, so they are a bit better through the corners. The Mono is the nicest handling track car I've driven so far, and yeah, it was pretty damn good. It surprised me how quick this was, but then again, I'm not quite sure why, considering I believe this is the second fastest car on the Top Gear track at the moment. Yeah, hugely fast. This is top of A class, by the way, and it's relatively cheap, so definitely give the Mono a go. Notice that we have a McLaren MP4-12C, 592 horsepower, 3,031 pounds of weight. For those of you who watched the Forza 5 uh, series will know that the MP4-12C is a damn fast car around our leaderboard. I believe it got to 17, uh, which is really, really good considering this is just kind of an ordinary supercar. Uh, supercars, I haven't really driven too many on Forza 5 so far, I'm not that far through the career mode yet. I do have to say the 12C does seem a little bit more well behaved, although it does drive fairly similar to what it did on Forza 5, uh, which means is one of these cars that sort of catches you out. You don't feel like it's going particularly quickly, it just feels like driving a supercar. However, when you sort of look at the times, you go, wow, really, is it going that quickly? And yeah, it's another sort of situation uh, like that. Uh, 12C is relatively well behaved anyway, pretty damn decent car to drive. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the more overlooked supercars in this game now, just because the 650S is in the game, and of course the 650S will be going around at some point. I'm trying to use sort of cars uh, without trying to sort of sound um, favouritism, almost have a favouritism view. 
Uh, a Selena 7, by the way, 575 horsepower, 2,756 pounds. I'm genuinely going to be slower for the first couple of episodes of this, so I'm trying not to use cars that people will get too angry about, you know, saying, ah, oh, you could have got a faster lap time with this. Uh, I'm just trying to avoid that at the moment. Anyway, the S7 was next. I believe this is an S-Class car, mid-S-Class, actually, now. So it's a bit higher PI than it was in 5. The Zelina 7 is a superb handling car. Um, it really does catch you out at this, because it's one of these hype cars that you don't necessarily look at. You wouldn't sort of buy the S7 intentionally, almost, just because it's so easily to forget about the car. However, it's a superb handling car, it's got massive top speed, I believe this does about 230 miles an hour, which for a 2004 hypercar isn't too bad. It looks pretty damn good, and it drives really well. My only issue really with this is the gearing is quite long, this is of course due to the fact this is sort of more of a top speed car. Uh, this car, I didn't go past third gear in it, and I did about 140 in third gear, that was about the fastest I got the car. Next up we have a car that didn't actually get thrown around in Season 2, and this is the Lotus Esprit V8. 350 horsepower, 2,851 pounds. Uh, I just sort of ended up forgetting about this car, I think. Which is a shame, because the Esprit is one of my favourite sports cars ever. I, I do like the V8 Esprit, actually. I, I would quite like to get one of these in real life. Um, because they're hideously unreliable. Anyway, uh, unfortunately the lights aren't on so you can't see amazing pop-up headlights, but the Esprit V8 is fairly decent to drive. There's no understeering in this thing because it's quite light, it's got a decent amount of power. It's quite a low-class car, I believe this is a B-class car, however, of course, it's an older supercar. Not particularly quick in a straight line, 170 miles an hour is the top end for this car. Um, but it is very cheap actually, I believe it's under 50,000 credits. <laughs> so definitely give the Esprit V8 a try if you haven't already, because it's damn near cheap. Yeah, the Esprit V8 was pretty good, it will go sideways, you can get it to misbehave. Uh, the brakes aren't quite as good as they would be on a modern vehicle, but like I said, this is of course an older supercar. 2002, I believe this car was made and of course the body shell comes from like the 1970s so yeah the Esprit V8 did pretty damn well though. Uh, next up Mitsubishi Evo 8 277 horsepower 3109 pounds of weight. We had an Evo 6 and an Evo 10 go around last season and they did alright. Uh, the Evo 10 was noticeably slower than the Evo 6. Uh, the Evo 8 I believe is the highest class uh, Evo in the game. Uh, I'm pretty sure on that. Unfortunately, I don't have an FQ400 to throw around. Although, I might one day sort of custom build an FQ400 to throw around here, because I think that could be quite interesting to see how well it could do. Anyway, the Evo has four-wheel drive, unlike anything that's gone around today. Most of the cars going here today are rear-wheel drive, other than this car and the one after this. Uh, and the four-wheel drive does feel pretty good. There's a noticeable amount of understeer from this rally machine, but that's kind of expected. It's also nowhere near as fast in a straight line as anything else you've seen today, but that was kind of expected. Yeah, the Evo 8 is a C-Class car, I believe. Right at the top of C-Class, and of course we needed a benchmark for C-Class, so this is what it's going to get. Uh, yeah, it won't be close to any of the other cars that you've seen go around today, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, how fast the Evo 8 really is as a C-Class car, uh, as uh, of course more will go around. And finally today we have the Mini John Cooper Works Cooper GP, 215 horsepower, 2,557 pounds of weight. The GP Mini was actually one of the last cars to ever go around on Season 2, and it did have to have the differential. In Forza 6 is not too much of an issue, this, it does do a similar sort of thing that it did in Forza 5, but it really isn't as bad as it was in Forza 5, so I have no need to go and get a diff, for those of you who didn't watch, I basically in the Hot Hatches video I had to use differential on old cars, because in Forza 5 if you tried to turn a corner basically the car would just go ridiculously through the rev range and it wasn't... <laughs> It doesn't feel like it would do that in real life, so I put the differential on it. But in this, nope, don't need to. The Mini is a fairly decent handling car. There's smoke pouring off it. It does understeer this thing. Um, 
and it does have some lift off over there. It's nowhere near as bad as it was in Forza 5. In Forza 5, this thing really did have some lift off over there. It's quite similar to the Citroen DS3 Racing, which I don't actually think is in this game. Uh, I, I don't know actually, I haven't actually looked for it. Uh, but the Mini did reasonably well for a hot hatch. It hasn't got too much power, so it's not ridiculously awful to drive. And um, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't really say much about the Mini. Uh, we'll have to wait for some other hot hatches to go around before we can really start to see where that car is compared to the others. Anyway, onto the times, and amazingly, the BAC Mono goes into first with a 115.125. That's extremely quick. I was not expecting the Mono uh, to get up there. It beats the Selene S7, which is a higher PI car by about 60 points. Uh, which got 115.302, beats a McLaren MP412C, with, which got 115.583, and we know that's an excessively fast car, the McLaren. Esprit V8, 120.545, Mustang, 123.634, Evo 8, 125.897, and the Mini Cooper, 127.767. Um, so, yeah, there you go, there's some benchmark times. Anyway, I figured I would compare these to the time set in Forza 5, and the Celine is 600 milliseconds quicker, 12C is 800 milliseconds quicker, which is quite surprising considering that was a really fast time in Forza 5. The Mustang's 400 milliseconds slower, however, I will say that it was the first car to go around, so yeah, it is a, a bit of a disadvantage. And finally, the Mini Cooper goes about a second quicker. Actually, yeah, that is a second quicker than it did in Forza 5, which is pretty good. That just shows how much the hot hatches have finally improved and are actually drivable now. Anyway, that is it. Um, I hope you have enjoyed. Please recommend cars that you would like to see go around the track in the comment section below. And make sure to submit your paint designs to my gamertag and message me on Xbox or something. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Emil. Until next time, farewell.